Hello everyone, and welcome to our first introductory video on how to machine using MR1. My name is Jake here at Langmer Systems, and our first video here is going to be about software workflow, and how that helps us kind of get our part from our mind into the computer, onto the machine. Easy as that. So, let's do it. Now, what do I mean when I say software workflow? Software workflow is basically just the process we go through when we want to make a part. And so the first place we want to start off with is our CAD software. And CAD software helps us get that part in our minds down onto the computer where it can be easily changed and really easily looked at. You know, that's much better than trying to write it down on a napkin or even on a, a drawing or a blueprint. Having that 3D model there to manipulate to really easily observe is such a huge benefit to us. And that way we can make quick changes on the fly uh, without having to erase, scribble, tear up, all that good stuff. And so once we have our 3D model set up, we bring it over to our CAM side of things. And the CAM is really where we take that 3D model and we decide how we want to machine that. We decide what processes we want to use and what tools we want to use, and that helps to generate a program. Now a program is basically just lines of code that our machine will look at in order to actually make the part. And that line of code can be called a script or a post, pretty much whatever you want to call it. I usually call it a program. Um, but so the machine will look at that program. That's our cut side of things. That's where the rubber meets the road and the tool meets the metal, and that's where chips start flying. That's where we want to get to. And so the cut side of things is where the machine looks at our program, looks at our code, and actually starts making movements out of it. And so that's where we can fine tune our details and really see if our code is good and if our design is good. When we get that final product in our hands, and start measuring it. So let's jump over to the computer side of things and I'll kind of be able to introduce more of what we're talking about. Now this is a good example of CAD software. Now what is CAD software? CAD software is basically computer aided design and what it does is it helps us visualize our part better than what we would have in our mind's eye. So what, for example, I can rotate this part around, I can look underneath of it, and I can check all the little corners, and I can really get down into the details of this part that I wouldn't normally be able to do. And with CAD, I can also quickly make changes on the fly. Let's say if I didn't like this pocket position, what I can do is I can, clip, with a couple clicks, I can do a little press pull, and I can pull this up a half inch. Or if I need a bigger corner here, so I'm gonna press pull again, and I can make this a gigantic corner here. You know what, that's maybe what I need for my design. And just like, you know what, maybe I don't need that corner there. I can do a little control undo, control undo, and I can reset all my changes just as easily as that. So CAD is a very powerful tool for not only being able to see what it is you have and what you're trying to make, and also to quickly make changes to that design if you need to. Now, this can really be any CAD software, whether that's Inventor or SolidWorks or CoCreate Model Manager. If you know what that is, then kudos to you. But I say really any CAD software because they can pretty easily talk with one another. You can save off a file that can be pretty easily opened by another CAD software. This happens to be open in Fusion 360 because I like Fusion. It's easy for me to use and it's quick to learn, and it's also free for hobbyists, which is a pretty big deal in my opinion. You know, this is still pretty powerful software that just anyone can use for free. So whatever software you decide to go with, um, it's always nice bonus points if that software comes with a CAM package installed with it. So here in Fusion, I can come up to my Design tab, click, and I can come to my Manufacturer tab. And this lets me hop on over to our CAM side of things. And what CAM is, is basically computer-aided manufacturing or computer-aided machining, whichever you prefer. And what CAM allows us to do is CAM allows us to write a program and to put into our machine to then have it run the part we want to make. And in my opinion, it's much better than just try sitting down at a computer, trying to type everything out by hand, because you can basically tell the machine, here's how big my stock is, Stock is the bar of steel or aluminum or whatever you're cutting out of and what you want it to do to that bar. 
And so what I've done is I've told the computer, hey, this is my tool, I want it to do this. And the computer goes, okay, here's all the lines of code you're going to need to do that. And it's those lines of code that really make each CAM software unique. You know, if you were to make a program in Fusion 360, you wouldn't be able to then turn around and add it into Mastercam or CamWorks or something similar. So with CAD software, you can kind of import and export, get them all to talk to each other and work with each other. With CAM, not so much. So I would recommend just kind of trying out different CAM software, seeing which one you like and which one works the best for you, and just kind of sticking with that one as we continue. And I'll just give a brief demonstration about what I'm talking about here. Uh, I'll come to the Simulate tab up here in Fusion, click on it, and this brings up basically a simulation of what our part is going to look like in the machine. We have our green bar stock here all set up and our first tool, face mill. So it's going to come down and rough out the top of our part basically to have what we had it in the CAD side of things. And it'll automatically jump to the next part and start our profile. And what this is really nice compared to sitting down and just writing it all by hand is that the CAM software basically comes up with the fastest tool path to get this part done really in the best way. Um, if I were to try and set this down by hand, it might take me um, a half hour to come up with this profile by entering it all in my hand. But this already takes our profile that we've used in the CAD side of things and automatically creates the best tool path. And so of course I can kind of tweak things I can tell it to run faster or slower, or to maybe take a different path to it, but that's really the nice thing about CAM, is that it, can, it takes all the brain work out of it, and it does really the heavy lifting for you, which is especially nice if you're new to CAM, or if you're new to machining in general. And that's one of the reasons we like using Fusion 360 much, so much here at Langmuir, is that really it's kind of the best tool that we use for our machines, and it's kind of the easiest way to get new people into using the software. And so that's kind of what we're going to be using going forward with a lot of our videos here. Um, you know, we kind of want to take you guys on this software workflow journey, kind of really mainly focusing on Fusion 360 here. So I'll just kind of skip ahead to the end of this routine here, and we'll catch up with the machine back when it's done with its CAM cycle. So here's what our part looks in the CAM software after everything's all done. Now you can see all the different blue and yellow and red lines. All of that indicates basically different tool paths that this, our tool is going to be taking through this part. And so that way I can zoom in and I can see, you know, at any point in time did these tool paths come through the wall of this part? You know, am I going to be heartbroken when this tool comes crashing through and throws my part or breaks the tool? Uh, we've been there. It's going to happen. But the nice thing about CAM software is you can really keep those incidents, those crashes down to the bare minimum by seeing what this is going to do. And actually, if this were to come crashing through the wall, we would actually be able to see the cut it takes. We'd actually see the gap in the part. So that way we're catching the mistakes early and soon and not catching them out on the machine. Now this is what we want to see. This is MR1 in its natural environment, cutting metal. This is really the combination of all of our hard work, you know. It started off with our CAD software that we made our perfect part, we made any changes we needed to it, and then we shifted it over to the CAM side where we told it what tools to use and how we wanted to go about cutting. And now, this is really the product of all of that hard work. This is the machine taking our code and running the part exactly how we told it to. This is really the fun side of machining. This is the most rewarding thing you get to see is seeing your ideas actually coming to life. And plus, now that we're actually at the machine, we can start taking a look to see how it's doing. You know, we can take a look to see how the tool's performing, and if it's going a little more smoothly than we thought it was, you know, we can actually bump up that feed rate, or we can increase our depth of cut a little bit to try and bring down that machine time, that runtime. And that's kind of, kind of the second most satisfying thing, is that making your program, making your cut as efficient as possible, that way it saves you time and possibly even money and gives you that satisfaction is like, yeah, I truly made this as perfect as it can be. You know, if you look here at the screen, we have an example of our cut control here at Langmuir Systems that we've developed. It kind of gives you a very clear cut, uh, straightforward example of what you're going to be looking at here at the machine. So you can adjust your feed rates, you can adjust your spindle override, you can kind of see what's coming up next in your program. And this kind of gives you a snapshot. 
and what you're going to be seeing in your program and what your machine is actually looking at as it's running your part. And while speed and productivity is very much something to consider, it's not always everything. And real quick here, as this GIF comes up, I just want to mention real quick that this is just kind of a representation of MR1. This is just kind of a quick example I made up in CAM. So it doesn't exactly match what the machine is running right now, but it's a pretty close approximation. But back to speeds, I think it's personally more satisfying to get you know that near perfect part come off my machine and really nail down my design um, and my processes that I'm going to be using rather than try and bump the speeds and feeds and potentially mess something up. So for your first part, maybe your first couple parts, go ahead and just take the time to really nail down your design and really nail down your machining processes before you start uh, speeding things up. And then once you do get that, go ahead, bump up that speed and feed, bump up that spindle rate. Really maximize that value of your programming and become that titan of industry. Hey, thanks again for watching. If you like this video, feel free to leave a thumbs up or a comment down below. If you, if you want to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing to our channel. I know we've got a couple of good projects coming up here in the future, so I'm excited to get started on them. And anyway, I'll see you in the next one.